Here's the machine I'm going to be demonstrating today. It's a Cooltech 75700 coolant exchange. Uh, it is a uh, pretty much a foolproof machine when it comes to working with cooling systems, uh, but there are some things that you need to watch out for and we'll talk about those as we go through. Just to orient you to the machine, uh, there's a pressure gauge that tells you how much pressure you're putting the system under because this machine actually provides the pressure. There's a uh, pressure control here where you pop it up, turn the pressure up or down, and then push the top back in to lock it. There are two control valves that you actually have to do all the steps together. Um, and in some instances, you have to turn a certain dial before the other dial. Uh, there are actually pretty clear step-by-step -step instructions briefly right on the front of the machine, so that's really handy on this machine for you to go through the different uh, steps. Turn around on the back so you can see what's happening back there. This machine comes with two containers that you can put in two different types of coolant. Generally you have a all makes all models coolant, the typical green uh, coolant, and then you, or, or uh, yellow coolant, and then you might have um, Dexcool, the, the uh, General Motors specific coolant in this side. This way you can uh, switch from one to the other uh, by just changing this over and going to the other coolant. The old coolant that comes out of the vehicle is stored in a container inside the machine. And you can see the level of that coolant, the old coolant on the side here on this gauge. Uh, it comes with two hoses. Uh, the clear hose allows you to see the old coolant coming out of the car and the black hose, this is how you control the coolant going into the car. It has a valve. Um, both of these hoses have quick connects on the end and the, the coolant actually can't come out when you open it until you attach a hose or, or you attach this to one of the adapters. Uh, speaking of the adapters, I'll show you all that stuff over here on the table. So adapter-wise, uh, you have your connections. These connect to the vehicle or the adapter hoses. You can see their stair step for different size hoses. Uh, and then they have the connection for those uh, hoses on the machine that I just showed you. These uh, pliers here, these are used to cut off the hoses uh, as you connect and disconnect them so you don't lose so much coolant. These are nut drivers. We have these with the machines because they work on the screw type clamps like this. Um, you also would probably need a set of pliers. A lot of the cars come with these uh, OEM hose clamps. Normally you don't want to use the, reuse these because they lose their tension. You'll end up with leaks. Uh, so we always replace any clamps that we take off the car with screw type clamps. Uh, various size hoses to adapt to the car's uh, radiator. And these are the fill hoses that you can connect to the end of the hoses on the machine uh, to allow coolant to flow. Once you connect this to that quick connector on the machine, then coolant can flow out of here. So as soon as you connect this, you want to think about the fact that if you hold the hose down, it's going to be pouring coolant on the ground. Uh, so once you connect these, you want to be careful of that. And I'll show you what I'm talking about uh, there in just a second. So on this vehicle, I've already connected the adapters to the radiator. Uh, basically what we do is we take the upper hose here, uh, disconnect it from the radiator, and we attach adapters to the upper radiator hose, and we actually attach a short hose and an adapter to the radiator. Now, when you're working with a the car, there's uh, initially when you bring a car in in the shop, likely the car is going to be warm, uh, so you're going to want to relieve the pressure of the cooling system. Uh, the machine actually walks you through how to do that. Uh, basically what they want you to do is take the, the coolant suction hose and we're going to put on one of these adapters and we're going to leave this up in the air. We're not going to tilt this down because coolant can now run out of this hose. And then on the vehicle you can get this out of the way here. On the vehicle you can pull off the overflow 
the, the hose that goes to the coolant recovery tank and you can put this hose right on where the overflow is and dial the machine in. What it tells you to do is turn the uh, both valves to vacuum so there's a vacuum setting there and there and this will actually vacuum right out of this hose and it'll pull coolant a uh, little bit of coolant out of the radiator but it'll relieve the pressure so it actually provides a suction sometimes it'll collapse the upper hose but this is pretty handy so you can you know literally open a hot cooling system once you've uh, taken all the pressure out and it's cooled somewhat so that's what we would do normally do uh, to get the pressure relief so we can just so we can undo the upper radiator hose or so we pull off the radiator cap and what we're getting ready to do is is you know your ho upper hose would be connected so we're getting ready to swap this over and put these adapters in so we would reattach this overflow hose put a clamp on it and then uh, on that same vacuum setting you take the hose and put it down in the radiator and you draw the coolant down below the level of the upper radiator hose. This is so we can disconnect the upper radiator hose without dumping a bunch of coolant. It's a much cleaner way to switch this over. So we would leave it on that vacuum setting, suction the coolant down in the radiator, and then turn this back off and set this aside. Take the upper radiator hose off, put our substitute short hose on here, mount our two adapters, uh, hose clamps all around. So now what we have is we have access to the, uh, to the um, engine through the upper hose past the thermostat, and we have access to the radiator through the upper radiator hose connection. So now we've, we've switched these over and it's a good idea when you start out doing a cooling system uh, swap, go ahead and top this off with water. And that'll, uh, that's better than having these big air pockets inside the system. So when we start to flush, it's, it's, a, it's a good idea to have a full system. So we would top this off with water, put the radiator cap back on. Um, I did miss one step that is pretty handy. If you use these pliers, when you're taking the, the upper radiator hose off, if you clamp it off first before you take it off the car, then you won't lose so much coolant. The coolant sometimes comes out of the upper radiator hose as well. So um, that's one reason to have those clamps. In preparation for the flush machine where we're gonna pressurize this cooling system, you have to recognize that the flush machine is pushing the coolant around the system and it's got pretty good pressure. It'll, it's basically whatever pressure the cap is rated at. This one's rated at 15 pounds. So if we, if we apply that pressure to the cooling system and our overflow hose, our coolant recovery hose is connected and open, then that coolant can push right out, overflow in the uh, recovery tank and pour coolant all over the ground. So what we do is we use a smaller set of uh, clamps here and we clamp this hose off and we would leave this on during the flush process. So next up we're going to connect our two hoses. Remember the coolant that's coming out of the car is coming out of the radiator because we're pushing the coolant in a backwards flow. So I would connect the clear waste hose to the radiator And then the black fresh recovery hose, I would connect to the upper hose connection going into the vehicle. Once I've got it connected, I can open it. And uh, now we're going to go to the machine and set it for the controls to do the coolant recovery process. Uh, one thing about this machine is you, it takes air pressure. So I'm going to connect an air hose to it, 
Um, and it does not take electricity, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so the next steps on here, they have us uh, relieve the system pressure. That's what we did first. We lowered the coolant level so we could swap the hoses over. We connect, uh, connected our connections to the vehicle. And now we're gonna do a pressure test. And what we do here is we it says turn the uh, regulator counterclockwise to its lowest pressure. So we're gonna decrease the pressure right now. We're gonna turn valve one to pressure test where it's already set right now. We're gonna turn, um, turn valve two to pressurize. And then once we do that, we're gonna dial this up and apply pressure to the system. Just turn it kind of slow. When you get it to about 15 pounds, which is what the radiator cap is rated at, uh, we use that pressure because that's what the car, the pressure the car is used to running under. And so the, um, if, you, if you stay around that pressure, you should be safe flushing this cooling system because it's already used to running at those pressures. So you want to do it whatever the radiator cap's rated at. And then once you get it there, you push this in and that locks it in at that pressure. We're going to turn both valves to uh, vacuum if a leak must be repaired. But since we don't have to repair a leak, we're just gonna leave it at off. And then now to do the exchange process, we're gonna open this upper valve again. And we're gonna turn the valves uh, to valve, uh, uh, turn both valves to exchange. So this one would go on exchange and this one would go on exchange. Now what it's doing is it's pushing new coolant in through the upper hose into the vehicle. The old coolant will be coming out of the radiator. And I'm not gonna let it play out that whole process, but when you get done, it says turn valve one to off, and then turn valve two to off. Now you can see already, it started to push the coolant through the upper hose. And ultimately what you do is you have to watch two things while you're flushing this. Number one, you'll see the old coolant start to cause this gauge to rise. This is the internal tank. And number two, you can flip the machine around and you can watch your coolant lower on the tank back here. Uh, let's say we have a 12 quart system. We're gonna let this bottle run down 12 quarts and then we're going to stop the machine and that tells us we pretty much replaced all the coolant in the vehicle. So once we've replaced all the coolant, our next steps are to disconnect this, uh, these, these adapters. So uh, we need to get the cooling system connected back how it belongs. So the first thing we would do, shut off the coolant and disconnect the inlet and the outlet. And we're gonna do that procedure we did before where we lowered the coolant level. So just in case it's under pressure, we would disconnect the overflow tube, put our hose onto the overflow tube, put it on vacuum and, and draw the pressure out. It's not likely to be under that much pressure though. Uh, then we would take off the upper radiator cap and we would suction the coolant down to where it was below this upper hose. Once the coolant level's down below this upper hose, we can set this aside, and we can take the upper hose um, off of the adapter, and have, so have the upper hose in your hand, and then when you take the hose that's connected to the radiator, pull it off real quick, 
shove this hose back onto the radiator and connect it. Uh, once you have your system tightened up and connected, then your coolant's going to be low because you lowered it to swap this hose over. So at that point, you're going to have to top off this coolant. Uh, once you do that, you can put the radiator cap on. And there's one more step we have talked about doing with this uh, system. You've got a coolant overflow tank over here. Uh, to the customer, this is where the mystery is. We, we, we've told them we've done something inside their cooling system, but they really have no evidence that we did that other than we might need, leave some tracks of coolant around. But the coolant overflow tank is a uh, is, is good evidence that you've done a good job. So what I recommend you do is take this coolant overflow tank and either suction out all the coolant uh, and then put new coolant in there or you might want to remove this tank go ahead and take it over the wash bin clean it all out and then put new coolant in. This is your best evidence that you did a good job so it's a good idea for when customers look at that to see nice clean coolant and they'll project that into their vehicle and know you did a good job. That's pretty much it. Um, refer to the, um, the uh, lecture that I did on this complete process. Make sure to put those two things together before you go to use this machine. Thanks so much.